currently retired for about eight years. Okay. And as my job has always been to, to show the, the, the big picture, you know, the full subject of anything that, that uh, you teach or get involved with. Uh, in fact, you know, the first step in making the right decision is to have the big picture overview of, of anything, and particularly true in, in a home business. So basically, the more you know about what is happening on the Internet, uh, the better decisions and the choices that you'll make. And and uh, hopefully the more money that, uh, that you'll make along the way. Now, I did this research initially about a, a year and a half ago, and it's not so much focused on, on e-commerce trends, although that's for another uh, workshop. Uh, this is more about Internet marketing, uh, the information overload that a lot of people are frustrated with currently, and, and try, try to plan something back to basics, which uh, every person can participate in. I first heard that expression, fair and democratic home business, uh, in reference to Shopping Sherlock about four years ago. And it's always uh, resonated with me. It became a core belief that this, this uh, Shopping Sherlock has to be a way that we can democratize the internet marketing system and allow each family to participate uh, in, in the internet profit and this whole sort of marketplace uh, tra transition that's happening. So that's how this workshop came to be, uh, more on internet marketing and another alternative, better way of, of involving more people uh, in, in the process and then making some profits. So with that, I, I do have to, I mean, I was going to sort of apologize for the colored slides, but I am an art teacher by trade and I love color, I love objects. So you'll see quite a colorful presentation as we go along. It's not just black and white like a lot of webinars that I've seen in the past. So I hope you bear with me on, on that factor. So we'll start off with the uh, first question is, who do you know wants to make extra money from home and build more financial security with internet profits? And the answer to that probably is 99%. So what we have to do is, is learn how to blow away at least 95% of the internet marketing programs with people power versus the self-branded gurus that, that are, are so prevalent on the internet landscape right now. And with that, of course, you learn how not to be disenfranchised from this greatest nation where we're no longer virtual and touchables just because we don't understand how to do a lot of the internet marketing stuff that, that seems to, to, to be so, so current out there. So welcome to the presentation called People Power and Internet Profits. Uh, this webinar will change your life. Uh, it's not your fault if you're not rich on the internet because it is the age of abundance. You have the right stuff, you just haven't found the right plan. And we'll look at a three steps, power of two, plan that can work for everybody. It will take you beyond what you normally think is your reality. Life is too short to live according to what is. This plan will open up to live with purpose according to what if. So I like to use symbols. And here you'll see three symbols that, that are, are seen uh, a lot throughout the presentation. The internet is making people rich, why not you? And you can't stop three big ideas whose time has come. One is people power, or we can call it grassroots capitalism, symbolized by the circle full of people, just like you and me. Second is internet power. This is the greatest transition of wealth in human history, symbolized by a computer disk. And then, of course, profits power. And for us networkers, this means residual money where you work once and you get paid multiple times. So we're going to integrate these three symbols together. The goals here are that the best methods for creating internet wealth have changed dramatically. And we've heard that over and over again with Mr. Weeder of all the industry disruptions are happening because of the internet uh, uh, a change in, in, uh, in money and, and commerce and, and uh, how people do business. There must be a degree of equality with a fair and democratic opportunity for every family. There's my favorite phrase, fair and democratic. 
The power of two will always win in this internet game of wealth. Because too often, especially on the internet marketing scene, everybody thinks you have to have huge lists and, and huge lead generation systems. The reality is, if you do it correctly, you really need only two people to get started. Fair, fair in the sense that it's a level playing field with the same rules. One, two, three, we can all follow the same basic steps. Democratic, everybody can do it. Objectives are to show how every family can earn their share of internet profits, show an alternative to making profits with power of two versus the current guru strategies, and we'll have a look at those shortly, show how digital information products are easy and fast messages by which to leverage the internet, show how, how to adapt to change, and show how to make your own personal plan of action. Actually, very simple to do. So what if you're stuck with old habits? You assume you know everything you need to know already. You have no experience with a stress-free and financially free lifestyle, so you're not really sure how to anticipate it if you don't know what you're missing. Who would sabotage your family's worth if, even if there was truly a basic program to make money on the internet? Who would run from the economy or financial hardship, rather it is the right reason to face it and put it into the right perspective that you must go on and succeed anyway. Make a wrong decision or no decision that can keep you on the treadmill to a dead end forever, especially if there's a simple plan that people can follow. So looking to make money from home online is very popular, very, very trendy. Uh, home business searches uh, average 2.2 million monthly. Uh, here's my big issue, uh, is that only one out of 3,000 people will search for, for the home business education keywords. So if you're not properly educated, this is where you can run into a lot of failures and a lot of frustration. Now, network marketing or direct sales can create five and six digit incomes from home. You just have to do it properly, follow three concepts. The most powerful form of marketing is still word of mouth. And it's not about the national economic transitions or problems you know, with the manufacturing industries or the information age. Uh, rather, it's how to get your own personal economy set up. Now, the current state of Internet Affairs is overwhelming to say the least. If any of you have, have experienced the internet landscape, uh, I call it a, th a three-ring circus. I I'm sure you would agree. There are definite power brokers who have created an autocracy in marketing. Uh, these are the early gurus, the early pioneers that have set standards for information products, more so than for home business programs. However, the right plan can open up internet profits to every family. And the choice is, you know, between the self-branded gurus and people power. How can we have both of these work together? I think it's very important to design a plan that can harness internet profits for every family in a fair and democratic way. The timing is perfect to d democratize the internet potential. With plan A, you have the internet you have profits, and they seem to be going mostly to these self-branded gurus, the ones that promise you everything on a silver platter if you follow you know, their wonderful programs, and not much to people power. So I think it's time that we designed a plan of some sort where you're using the internet, you're using the profits, and a lot of it is going to people power, people like, like you and myself, because we're following some simple systems to, to plug into uh, some of the current trends, as well as the self-branded gurus, because we, we do appreciate their leadership, but it just has to kind of spread out uh, amongst more people. So here's what I call, or what, what I mean by uh, a self-branded guru plan. And I wrote a blog a few, well, about a year ago, I, I guess now, and I used Magnetic Mitch as, as my, my symbol for a, a, a self-branded guru. 
And this is how I make money online, he says. You need the right personal brand, so you stand out in the crowd. You get people on a list, and you sell them something. And in order to do that, I've got a scramble here of all the different strategies. I, I, I know lots of people have done this. Lots of people complain about having to do all this. You know, it's a traffic and lead generation. It's a, it's a Facebook super fan. It's the search engine optimization. It's leads and more leads. Supposedly, you, you can't even talk to them. Uh, there's banners. It's text ads. It's uh, weekly tutorials. It's big lists. It's design lead capture pages, articles, blogs, traffic, location. This is what's going on the internet. But how many people can actually do this? Uh, that that's a big concern. So. On the other hand, you have sorry. On the other hand, you have what I call people power plan, and I symbolize this with with uh, uh, nice, average, smart Millie, and how I make money online. And her questions are, what do you really want? What really works for you? Do you have a phone? Do you have internet access? And then these are the principles by which, you know, regular people operate is that my marketing plan is based on three steps that everyone can do. Not all this guru stuff. In fact, you don't need to know about the industry, the company, the products, the comp plan, the, the selling techniques, the life coaches. Experts tell a story. That's a power of leverage. And, and the encompassing, sort of the background here, is that we all have families. We have jobs and communities to support. We may not have a democracy of backgrounds and bank accounts, but we have equality of hope for security and success. So my people-friendly plan is in three steps. You find two people who are open to making change, changes. And you build relationships, and you add value to people's lives. So first step is to use a video to leverage ex expertise. You're just a messenger. There's no personal rejection. If they reject the message, that's to their disadvantage. Number two, you invite to a professional webinar where you let the tool do the talking. In fact, uh, last Friday, I had a gentleman sign up uh, as, a, as an affiliate because he listened to Brandon's uh, powerful presentation on Thursday night. And, and he was so impressed that they basically joined on Saturday morning. So that's, that's the leverage. And then you follow up with, with free value offer to enhance your prospect's life, whether they want to join or not. So the whole plan is basically in this statement. The three steps, power of two. Do you know two people who want to make extra money from home and build more financial security? And these are two people anywhere around the world. I just had a drink of water. Now, I, I thought I would include this slide because we, we work with um, a, a social media platform that has a lot of professional people. And, and I think it's important to realize that the rich need leveraged income even more than the poor. That nobody, uh, that we can't be complacent that one skill or one company or one industry will guarantee a lifetime income. We can't believe that slowly working up the corporate ladder will give you peace of mind because markets will rise and fall. And mostly, you can't believe anyone who assures you that they can predict the future. The more they assert, the more you need to avoid them. Because as we know, the internet is disrupting so, so many industries and, and so much of the marketplace out there as we've known it traditionally. Even MLM companies are being hugely disrupted. But that is companies with physical products. And this is the, the heart of the, the presentation. Uh, this is my goal, how, how we can get this message out there. Uh, reality check number one. The truth is that the expanding internet should never be relegated to some heavy-duty marketers whose power is in unlimited lists 
and a finely honed ability to sell. It is the right time to bring forward the big idea to embrace technology by every person, regardless of background and expertise. The masses must not be bypassed in this greatest wealth transfer in history. This transition must demand dignity and a grassroots response and not just enrich a few elite top, top dogs. And I have to add here as a personal note, this does not include blogging because I find too many people blogging their way to an income and that ha has to be the most difficult way to earn an income is by blogging for, 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 for a living. Now the call to action for people power is pretty basic. Talent is overrated. You know, this is not sports, this is not entertainment, it's only action that matters. We need to think differently than other online marketers. That's your unfair advantage. We're told we all need to be leaders, but that would be really ineffective. It's far better to be good followers and find more good followers. The best way to take action, if you really care, is to make a little changes to set the transformational changes in your life. You work on yourself and how you respond to things because when you change, everything changes. And if you don't act on the gift of inspiration, don't wonder why it no longer comes to you. If you don't use it, be willing to lose it. And that's our dreams. This is why, why, we, why we believe in, in income and believe in prosperity for our families. So you start a personal plan, uh, very basic. This is a nice, nice plan to share with your family or friends or neighbor where you sit down and, and just identify four, four simple areas. Number one, uh, what do you want to do in life? Make a little list. Number two, what are you willing to give up in order to get it? Because to get to where you, where you haven't been, you have to do something different in order to be there. Number three, identify what obstacles or excuses are stopping you, mentally or physically. And then number four, identify the ways that you can move beyond these obstacles, each one separately. Finally, the price of doing something is far less than the price of neglect and of being unsuccessful all the rest of your life. And that's from a great networker, Jeff Olson. And this is your mindset as your blueprint. So this is a little complicated, but there's actually a whole blog that's written about this one. Uh, to do a simple exercise, uh, I call it a straight line business picture. It's where you draw two sets of lines. Uh, one is straight and one is very crooked. Uh, each between two points, A and B. A represents here I am. B is here is where I want to be. Now you can add the following labels to show the actions along the way. So you can see in the top line, you've got the video, you've got a webinar, you've got a follow-up follow value, which with Sherlock is, is a free app to save money, major discounts. And if you want to go down to the, to the bottom line from A to B, uh, this is internet marketing. And, and this is loaded with all kinds of stuff that, that you have to learn to do. You know, huge learning curve for, for a lot of people. Very expensive, very timely. I know people that sit for hours pounding on the keyboards, you know, trying to do the emails and the blogs and the banners. And as soon as you stop pounding, you stop prospecting. So there has to be something better. Has to be an alternative, in my opinion, uh, to, to this um, uh, internet marketing things. And just to summarize, uh, I'm sure we would agree that the straight line is the shortest distance between here I am and here is where I want to be. It shows direction, purpose, and self-determination to get to your destination. There's no fuzzy thinking, there's no detours, and there's no excuses. So to summarize it, we need to keep it virally simple. Now every family can ride the wave of prosperity I really liked what Michael Weider said the other day, that we're not just standing on the shore, we are in the water. 
So the internet is here, the profits are here. Uh, some will, of course, go to the self-branded gurus, but hopefully the majority will come to people, to people like, like you and I, you know, the, the, the democratiz democratization of, of internet wealth. Main Street People Power returns to basics with fair and democratic rights for internet profits. And your, your timing is perfect to plug into major internet trends. So the digital products are easiest for internet major trends and profits. Uh, we know online shopping and savings is a huge trend. It's a fast-growing industry projected to be a uh, trillion dollars in uh, 2013. We've bypassed that already. Uh, other uh, online uh, digital products are online mobile games, uh, online advertising in the, in the U.S. But we definitely see on the slide that, that the online shopping and savings, your child or ever wonder, never find your dreams. The question isn't who is going to let me, it's who is going to stop me from uh, Ayn Rand. So I would, I would love to have questions and comments, that's, that's the usual procedure, but I'm not sure how you can do that, Brandon. Well, this is what we can do, Anne Marie. If anybody has a question, they can raise their flag on your computer. So, right above the meeting chat box, uh, click on the flag if you have a question, and I will mute you so that uh, you can ask Anne Marie a question. Yeah, it's great. Well, so far, no, Anne Marie. I think you, you're good. You were clear. <laughs> Well, I know it's a, a little bit contrary to, to what a lot of people do on the Internet. So I think we need to definitely open up a, a discussion, a conversation about how we can make it easier uh, for the average family. So hopefully this is a good beginning to, to show that it, it's very possible just to do three steps. Find two people someplace in the world that are open to making changes and plugging into these big trends. and, and You've, you've started the process, you know, to make money from home. And I think only Shopping Sherlock can actually fit that, that formula. I don't think there's any other company out there that, that can actually do what Shopping Sherlock does for, for families. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Anne-Marie, for uh, coming on board tonight and doing, being their guest speaker and giving training on this subject. i got to tell you, when I decided to to really get back into network marketing after I was laid off for the second time. And uh, I, I said, you know, I got to learn and take advantage of the Internet. And I, I joined uh, a, a couple of systems, programs that would teach you how to use the Internet and all these other tools. But one thing I found was everything I joined always led me to have to purchase something else or led me in a different direction or I needed to listen to this guru. And then when I finally got the hang of something, either the owner of the company or the leaders were already a part of another system and telling me I have to pay another 50 bucks to come over here. And yeah. it, I was just lost. <laughs> so yes. I like the approach of just keeping it simple. Yes, it works best. Some of the, the, the biggest teams on, on, on Shopping Sherlock are, are doing it out of homes, home events. So that, that's where people like to get together and talk about how they can save money and, and how they can make money. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Anne-Marie. We're going to be having you back to, to do some more workshops. I know you're working on that. And uh, just but we'll, we'll, I'll get with you later on, and we'll do some more scheduling. So thank you very much for being a guest on our training tonight. Yes, well, thank you so much, Brandon, for, for the invitation. As I mentioned, this is near and dear to my heart. Uh, we, need to, we need to revitalize this industry. And I think until we have more people with more success, the public is always going to look at us as kind of, you know, uh, sideways. So we just have to plug in and get more people involved, simple. And Shopping Sherlock is going to lead the way. I, I have no doubt about that.
All right. Thank you, Anne Marie. Now we are leading into our next uh, session of our training tonight. And, and I, I hope you guys were able to take some notes and you learned from that. This, this call or webinar is being recorded. So for anybody that missed it or you need to go back to look at our, uh, more information, uh, you definitely can do so. Anne Marie is also on on Facebook, and so Anne Marie, if you could put your your Facebook link or contact information in the chat box, so people can probably send you an email or Facebook or Skype some questions, and you can reach out to them on a one on one basis. That would be absolutely great. Well, the next thing we're going to talk about tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is the great wealth transfer uh, and what this what this industry is all about. And this is very important because I will consider myself an expert in network marketing. I've been here for 15 years. I study the industry. I look at all the companies out there. I make it a point to connect with all of the top leaders and the CEOs to, you know, you want, you want to study your craft. And, but within our own industry, we have companies that are selling products in their own industry. So it's like uh, network marketing is one big one big umbrella, and underneath that umbrella you have the health and wellness, you have technology, you have skincare, you have weight loss, you have a whole lot of different industries to be a part of. Now the the ones that I am familiar with, health and wellness, very much so. Also uh, telecommunications, very much so. But the one thing that I was not an expert on that I was not even on my radar screen was e-commerce. And the first, uh, I would say, introduction to e-commerce, and I'm actually a little ashamed that I didn't know more, was a company back in the day that's no longer here called Escape International that was ended up getting bought out by Longevity. And Escape had a product in their division called Aisle 19. It was an online shopping mall. And that was the company that I had my biggest break. It was my first big break. When I joined that company, I came off of uh, you know ACN at the time. And here, within a sh very short period of time, I don't know, maybe two months or so, I ended up being the number one producer on the West Coast in the entire company. I gr went through the ranks very rapidly. And it was an easy concept. You know, you shop, you get cash back, and it was online shopping. Well, when the company got bought out, you know, I, I, I kind of left that, that concept behind of online shopping. And at the time, the company couldn't make the, the platform of Vile 19 profitable. It was a great savings tool, but they didn't figure out how to actually make money from it. And so no one had ever really taken advantage of uh, e-commerce and network marketing. Another company attempted to. It was a mobile app type company called 90210, and they their whole concept was, hey, since everybody is looking at their smartphones, why don't we allow advertisers to to advertise to people through their smartphones? Great idea, and, and, and the texting, they just never really figured out how to really do it and capitalize on it. So the owners of that company came out with another company and used their same platform on a company called Ripplin. And some of you might have heard of that. Last year in 2013, probably around March to August, yeah, March to August, Ripplin went crazy. It went bananas. It was you can join it for free. They were say they were about a year ahead of launch. They're gonna take. In fact, their entire message is the same message of shopping Sherlock. And I'm working right now. Not right now. Go to bed. Sorry, this is Saturday night, so every now and then you might hear my, my six-year-old pop in. Close my door. But anyways, Ripplin kind of went through the, the network marketing community like a knife through butter. It was the hottest thing going. It was the next big kept secret. And the concept was great. The execution, completely horrible. You don't even hear that company anymore, and it's and it's a shame. Of, of, but but because they, they had a great concept, great marketing, I think they put almost like over a million people in the system in a very short period of time. 
but they never they weren't able to execute. Now there is another company in the e-commerce market in America called Market America. This is a company that nobody has heard of. It costs more money to join than shopping Sherlock. The company has a horrible compensation plan, but they made six hundred and forty million dollars last year. Six hundred and forty million dollars in 2013. Now you have to think about that. A company that nobody has heard of has been around for well over 10 years, taking advantage of online shopping, and they're only in, I think, six or seven countries outside of America. Very limited. Their search engine can, cannot even do close to what Sherlock can do. $640 million. Now you have Shopping Sherlock, a, co a company also that nobody has heard of yet is ranked number one in the world in all network marketing companies for top performers over the last six months. And six months ago I never heard of Shopping Sherlock. So I decided when we joined with Shopping Sherlock to become a student of the industry because you know how they say documentation beats conversation every single day of the week. Conversation beats document. I mean, documentation beats conversation. So every company is always trying to have documented articles to back up who they are, what their industry is doing, and what their company is doing. Especially if somebody gets it into a magazine, gets put in a magazine or something like that. You look at the coffee industry, and the number one thing they run around talking about is 70% of the planet drinks coffee, right? That's their number one claim to fame. Global company, 70% of the planet drinks coffee. Next to water, coffee is the most consumable product on the planet. And you know what? 97% of the planet is shopping online and being engaged in e-commerce. And 97% of those individuals, actually 99% of all of the people that shopping online are called consumers. We're all in this game. Like my old quotes, one thing to miss the wave when you're in the water, but it's another thing to miss the wave when you're, I mean, I'm sorry. It's one thing to miss the wave when you're standing on the shore. It's another thing to miss the wave when you're in the water. We're all in the water as consumers. Nobody has quite figured out yet, how can I become a distributor how can I become that guy that's getting paid on this industry? Now, we're going to go over that a little bit right now through these slides. So this is more of an information for you. It's not necessarily a presentation, but I know we do have a couple of guests on that want to learn more about Shopping Sherlock. So I'm going to give you a little bit more about Shopping Sherlock and our industry. Now, this is the Great Wealth Transfer. Allow me to introduce you to a recession-proof global industry where you can own a system to build a network of people and start generating wealth as a business owner instead of just making money. What that basically means is that we're not a, a job. You know, this is a business. You own your own business and by hitting a certain position in the company, you're going to actually have equity in Shopping Sherlock itself. That's another, another great benefit. It actually is the most important benefit that most people are take, they take lightly. They don't fully understand what that means. And, and, and I don't fault them for that because it actually comes with lack of education on what equity actually means. We're not taught to have equity. We're not taught to learn that in school. We're taught to become employees, not employers. So when you talk to somebody about this business, you tell them, how would you like to have part ownership in a billion dollar company, and they have that glazed look in their eye, that's because they just don't know any better. So you can't fault them for that. It's our job to kind of educate them on that and talk to them at their level. That's not derogatory. It's just understanding your target audience and you're talking to them at their level because anything above their level 
will start to confuse and a confused mind does nothing. It shuts off and it rejects. So like Anne Marie was talking about keeping internet marketing simple, you keep the message of this business simple. And I'm, I'm gonna and I love to talk in analogies. I'm gonna give you an example of what separates Shopping Sherlock from other companies out there that are product based companies and why this is a recession proof business. You see, there's a lot of companies that have great product and services, right? And their product and services that most people don't need, can't use, can't afford, can't sell, can't give away, they end up having stocked up in the garage, the van, or the trunk of their car. They have what's called you need to purchase the product for your own check. In fact, most of those companies don't have a lot of customers. Their customers are their reps. And that can end up getting you in trouble down the way because you're not actually signing up customers. You're only selling product to the people in the business. And the people in the business are only buying products so that they can qualify to get paid. What does that sound like to you? That doesn't mean that the product is bad. The product's good. It works. It's great. You can have a lot of stories out there about success of somebody being on a product. I am not knocking that. I've been on the product. You come into my kitchen right now and see how much product I have in my, in my, in my shelves. But when you're talking to a family who might have had laid off, who doesn't have an excess of the budget, you know, they don't have extra income after the bills are paid, and the car might have broken down that month that, that ate up their, you know, excessive income, and they have to choose between buying your product or paying for their bills, which one do you think they're going to choose? They're going to choose their bills if they're responsible. And if you sold them that product and they're not buying the product, you just lost a customer. Which means you're going to have to go find another customer. And it's an endless cycle. Because the, re the economy actually has an impact on your business. But when you're looking at a company like Shopping Sherlock, where the product that we offer is a product that we give away for free. So people don't have to spend their money to use our product. They don't have to be convinced of the value of our product. Why? Because they're already shopping online anyway. In fact, in a bad economy, more people go online because they know they can get better deals and savings online. Just like in back in the day before the internet, how many of you remember mom, dad, maybe grandma and your aunts cutting out coupons at the kitchen table? And you had to sit there and help sort them out. I do. That's what I had to do. That was my job, me and my brother, we had to sort out the coupons, and my mom used to have a different stack. This area was for the fruits and vegetables, this area was for the meat, you know, <laughs> we used to do that. And I'd always would be embarrassed, we'd go to the store, especially with my aunt. My aunt was bad at this, she'd have a purse full of coupons. We'd go to the store, we're standing there in line, there's always a lot of people behind us. We get up there and she starts pulling out her coupons. I'm like, oh good grief. And then they had to ring it up and, and put it in the code. We'd be there forever. And everybody's looking at you. And my aunt didn't care. <laughs> she didn't care if anybody looked, if it embarrassed. She said, they're not paying my bills. <laughs> but in a bad economy, we're looking for deals. So everybody's looking for a deal. And if you can show somebody how they can save money on an item that they're going to purchase anyway, is that a hard sell? No. Who in their right mind would say no to that? So in a recession, in, in this economy, our business is recession proof. Because our product is whatever it is you need to buy for your home. From car parts to food. We can find you the best deal. So why wouldn't you? If you're going to take time to Google something, why not take time to Sherlock it? Just to make sure you're going to get the best deal. Does that make sense to everybody? Type I in the chat box if that makes sense. Because that is the language of our business here. It's a recession-proof business. Now, this is the biggest shift of wealth in the history of mankind. What, do you, what does that mean? See, again, you have to be careful when you say that because an average person... You're using words they don't normally use every single day. They don't hear shift of wealth. <laughs> what does that mean? You know, the economy changes, I'm still broke. Well, here's how I explain it to people. 
You think that we're living through a recession right now and there is no recession. What do you mean, Brandon? How can you say that? A recession means lack of, lack of money. Where money want, used to flow, it no longer is there, like a drought. I live in California and we actually are living through a drought. There is actually lack of water. The river didn't move, there just is no more river, period. That's like a recession, a drought. But in this case, there is more money flowing around out there in the world than ever before in history. Let's give a little history lesson. You remember the times when our stock market hit 10,000 and the world went nuts. They went crazy because of that. They didn't think it was possible to get to 10,000. Do you realize right now it's like at 17,000? Some people think it's going to go down. Some people think it's going to go up. Guess what? They're both right. That's just the way it works. It always goes up and down. Bull and bear market. But the fact that it's already 17 points higher than it was when it hit 10,000 is, 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 is just ludicrous. We're talking about doubling the world's wealth in less than a decade. Where is that money going? So if you still don't quite understand, picture it like this. Picture that money is nothing but a river. And on this river is not water, but money. And everybody is fishing in the same river of money. Now those who have the biggest nets obviously capture the most money. Now, what society used to teach us is that if we went to college and got an education and a degree, our net would, would automatically be bigger than everybody else's net who did not have a degree. And you know what I found out? Because I graduated from college with a degree and I was, I was already in debt. It's like I had a negative net. And then when I finally found a job, I was working for people who I was more qualified than my own boss. And they were making more money than I was. And they weren't in the debt that I was in because they didn't go to school. And I was answering to them. And then got laid off anyway. So that old model no longer works. In fact, wealthy people already know that doesn't work. See, the wealthy people already have bigger nets because they have more resources than everybody else. They understand that money is nothing but energy and a resource. So they're floating around on the river of money in their yachts with huge nets catching all the money that they can, their little nets can hold. Some nets are bigger than others. But you guys saw before the presentation started the wealth inequality in America. What people believe it is and what reality is. And I'll play that at the end for those who missed it. But what about the rest of us, the poor and the middle class, and it's increasingly hard to tell the difference between the two? Because here's the bottom line. Even if you consider yourself middle class, you're three paychecks away from being homeless. That's right. Just three paychecks away of losing everything. It didn't used to be that way. You may have a job, but you have nothing in savings, nothing in 401k. In our generation, there certainly will not be any Social Security. And if we don't have a job, we are instantly in trouble. So it's not that far of a fall than the homeless guy that's outside your grocery store or on the corner. But the middle class believes in their mindset that they're not that bad off. <laughs> Until reality hits when you get that layoff notice. So we are all sitting on the side of the river, fishing for money with the little fishing pole. Now, who do you think is going to catch more money? Our one little net with a hook or the rich people out there in the river with the big nets? That's how the economy has been working. And you know what happens every now and then? The river decides to shift. The river decides to move. The river starts to follow the new trends. The river decides to look at the change of technology. 
I remember if, if you guys, I know I forgot to look that up. You go to YouTube and you pull up, look up something that's called, and, and, and this is very clear for what I say so nobody doesn't think I'm cursing. Shift, S H I S H I F T, Shift Happens. I forgot to download that for tonight's training and I'm kicking myself for it. Shift happens. When I was a teacher, I used this in uh, one of my sociology classes where I was teaching the kids and I showed them this version. I said, you guys must understand that you live in a changing world today and that technology is changing so fast that the rest of the world cannot catch up. Michael Weider is trying to contact me. So let me let him know. Doing a live training. So that the teachers use that video to show how fast the economy is moving, technology is moving, how the rest of the world is passing by America. Now this was at the turn of the century when it, when we started taking notice of this. How technology would change and double every few years. And what ended up happening was they said that at the end of the video it says that our education system is teaching and training kids to prepare for jobs that have not even been invented yet. And when I first saw that, there was no such thing as Facebook. MySpace had, was just really coming on the scene. There was no Facebook. There was no YouTube. Google was really st was at, just kind of taking over uh, Yahoo. Because in the 90s, it was all about Yahoo when I was back in college. And who knew that some company called Facebook, at the time when I first saw that video, that kid was in high school. And a kid I'm talking about was Mark Zuckerberg, was a high schooler. You know, going through puberty at the time was going to invent something that was going to change the world and make him a multi-billionaire and he's never sold, actually sold a product. Who, are, who, who saw that coming? <laughs> and guess what? There are more companies that's going to come out that you don't even, not even on your horizon, that in the next five years will be billion dollar companies that a lot of people will be putting their resumes in and trying to get a job with. See, the river of money is shifting and moving. And what, what do the wealthy people do? They pull up anchor and they move with the river. That's why in a good economy, wealthy people get rich. And in a bad economy, wealthy people get richer. Greatest economic recession, 2013, the wealthiest people in the world, their income and net worth increased between 7 and 20%. If not more, for the top 1%, it was almost 50% more they increased in their wealth. Mark Zuckerberg added an extra $12 billion in just one year to his net worth. Can you, can you imagine that? Bill Gates adds an extra $34 million by the time he puts his head down to go to sleep and when he wakes up in the morning. As a matter of fact, if he was driving down the freeway and somebody dropped $5 million out of their car, if he stopped to pick that money up, he would be losing money. The wealthy are moving when the money moves. And the reason why they make more money in a bad economy is because there's more money for them to grab because all of us did not move with the money. We're still sitting on the riverbank pitching our little fishing pole in a dried up river. And we think the money's dried up. We, we don't even realize that farther up the river it shifted. We think there's no more money left. And what do we do? We've tried to beg and force our congressmen, elected officials, and the president and the government to force the river to come back our way. It's never coming back. You adapt or you die. 
So if you want to get out of a recession, then make sure you are in an industry where there is no recession. Shopping Sherlock. If what I said made sense, type me in the chat box if you're with me so far. I'm breaking this down very slowly. Got to paint a picture for you in your head so that you understand because most people have no clue about what I just said. No clue. Try talking to your brother, your sister, your mom, your neighbor, somebody on Facebook and see, see what they, what, ask them, hey, what do you think about e-commerce? Hey, what do you think about the recession? What, 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 what industry is, prof, is, is prospering right now? You know, <laughs> and see what they tell you. It's like doing man on the street. They have no idea, but they're all involved. That's why the top 3% get so rich. They're looking at everybody else as sheep. They're informed. It's like they're unplugged from the, from the matrix. This is the biggest shift of wealth in the history of mankind taking place in the industry right now. It's called e-commerce. Experts say that this is the beginning of a 10-year window of opportunity. Now, this is very important. Window of opportunity. I encourage all of you. I don't know if it's on Netflix or Amazon Prime. I don't remember which one, but I watched this. It's from the History or a yeah, yeah, History Channel. And the title of this documentary is called The Men Who Built America. The Men Who Built America. And I'm talking about you're coming off off of the Civil War. And there was a, a certain window of opportunity anywhere between around 1880 to 1915 or so. 1915, 1920. I need to brush up on my history. This is what I taught. That little window right before World War I and actually part of World War I. Actually, you know, it's a little, little before World War I. What happened was that America was going through a boom time. And there was a monopoly in America. There was no government regulation. It, 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 you want, it was the truest form of capitalism that you will ever find in our history was during that specific period. No government oversight, nothing. These guys ran wild. And when I say these guys, I'm talking about the Henry Fords, the Vanderbilts, the Rockefellers. Let me think of some other people. The, the uh, Edisons. They had a monopoly. It was like about 10 individuals. Yes, the Morgans, the Pierces. They owned the entire country. They owned the presidents. They had so much money that at one point, Rockefeller was considered the richest man who ever lived next to Solomon. His net worth was over $350 billion. You, you hearing what I'm saying? You guys think that Bill Gates is rich? You think that Carlos Slim is rich? $70 billion, $50 billion? These guys in their time was worth three hundred and fifty billion. In fact, they had there's one famous meeting that took place where you had a Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, uh, who else was it? I gotta watch that episode again. But it was just four of them. Carnegie, there you go. Carnegie was the main one too. Four of them were worth over six hundred and eighty billion dollars sitting in one room together four men now of course things got crazy the stock market crashed and we had to have the new deal with Eisenhower it's giving you guys a little bit of history lesson but during that period was the beginning of a small window where if you had the entrepreneur spirit and some resources you can become a self-made man or a woman, well, at that time, man. 
Window of opportunity happened again. Great Depression. During the Great Depression, America generated the most millionaires during any other time in history up to that point because people were forced. They were forced. Because there were no jobs, they were forced to have their own business and be self-reliant again. America used to be a self-reliant country. Ain't nobody had jobs. People owned land, and they worked their land, and that was their living. Industrial Revolution, everybody went back to the cities and went to, went to uh, factories. But when the Great Depression happened, it forced everybody back into the fields. That's right. Not only were people hungry for a change, they were flat out hungry. Ever heard of the bread lines? That's where that comes from. I've got a video. I've got a file with that when I used to teach. Uh, I made a video on this so people can see that during the Great Depression. But the flip side of, of it was you had a lot of entrepreneurs that sprouted up during that time. And a lot of wealth was created because Americans were forced to have to do something out other than look for a job if they wanted to survive. Small window of opportunity took place, just like the railroads, just like the invention of freeways, the cars and highways, the invention of electricity. Think about this. Before electricity, you'll see this if you watch The Men Who Built America, how did we have lights? We didn't have lights. Everybody had candles. So if you were in the candle business at the time, you were wealthy. The entire nation needed your product. In fact, when the railroad was built, 40% of the product being moved through the railroads from the East Coast to the West Coast had to deal with candles and waxes and stuff like that. It was, it was, it was like the energy industry. Only a few men owned it. And when electricity... Yeah, there you go, kerosene. And when electricity was invented, say bye-bye to kerosene. A shift in wealth took place. So the people that were spending money on kerosene started to spend money on electricity. The money didn't go on the money didn't dry up. It just changed hands. It was a shift. The airline industry, the automobile industry, the shipping yard industry. You want to know anybody ever heard of um uh Arnold Schwarzenegger's wife? Uh, she's right here in California, and her name is is blocking me out. But she's an on not an Onassis, Shriver, Maria Shriver. Do you know where her daddy uh, and, and her 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 family made their money from? Actually, not her daddy. Her her uh yeah her daddy's side, because her mother's side was Kennedy's sister. Made the money in steel of the shipyards. Because after World War I, there was so much boats in, in the world that needed for. And nobody wanted them. You couldn't give them away. So he bought them all up. Now, I might be getting this confused. I, I don't know if it was Shriver or Onassis. Uh, Jacqueline's uh, father. One of those two. But anyways, that family, what he did was he bought up all of the boats. He has Onassis, bought up all of the boats, turned around, and you know what happened? Well, because of the war, American soldiers traveled around the world, and they started to get a taste of food and, and cultures that they never had ex were exposed to before, and they wanted to bring it back. So Onassis had a whole bunch of boats and ended up having the largest shipping fleet in the world. Took advantage of an opportunity when nobody else did. It was a short window of opportunity. It happened in the 90s. Giving you guys a history lesson here. It happened in the 90s. The dot-com era. This is in Mark's, uh, Walk's Michael Weeder. And the dot-com boom era happened before the bubble. You guys remember that? The Silicon Millionaires. People were creating stupid names of companies they'd never heard of before that couldn't do anything, that didn't sell any product, as selling them for $300 million, $500 million before the boom, before the bust. It went crazy. That was a small window of opportunity. If you were smart enough 
to start some kind of dot-com company in 94 and then sell it in 97, you were a multi-millionaire, if not a billionaire. Small window of opportunity. Michael Weider's Internet Expos launched these companies like AOL, Netscape, Yahoo, and they were huge. And he saw, he witnessed what took place. He took advantage of it to a certain extent, not like he wanted to. And he had told me, we went to dinner, he was like, you know, I'm never going to allow that type of an opportunity pass me by again. And here we are today. And he sees this as the beginning of a golden opportunity over the next 10 years that nobody knows about yet. Why this is going to be a billion dollar industry. And you guys are positioned right here, right now. This is the difference between having vision and having sight. I say this with people even on our own team who still don't get it. You're looking short term. I'm looking long term. Ten years from now, I'll be 47 years old. And I'm already retired at 30 and when I, when I was 36. 47. I'm patient. You have to think like a millionaire. Ten years is going to come anyway. So am I going to spend the next ten years hopping around from program to program, the next gifting program, or the next hottest thing that comes out that's only going to be around for six months? Is that what I'm going to be doing for the next ten years, just because I can make a quick 2000 bucks? It's not for me. It may be for some of you. It's not for me. I'm looking for long-term residual income. And I'm not going to wait until I'm too old that I can't get back out there and do it again. You do it now. It's like that old old Disney story of the of the uh, the grasshopper and the ants. Sure, there are a lot of things out there right now that you can be a part of and make some good money right now. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's all about what it is you are looking for. People are blowing me up on a text. Can you guys still hear me? Type Y in the chat box. Fantastic. I thought, thought, thought you might have lost you. So let's get back to that uh, the, 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 right now, where we are right now, and that river, and this window of opportunity. So you should be proud of where you sit right now. Know that this is a long-term deal. This isn't a short term. If you're looking for, because I, I know a lot of times in the worst situation to be in is trying to build your, 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 your business when you're struggling very bad financially, where if you don't make things happen right now, you're not going to eat next week. That's a very difficult position to be in to build your business. You have to be stable. Only two things happen to people and when they're in those situations. One, they become wildly successful because they have their back against the wall. Or two, they get frustrated and they quit. There is no in-between when you're in that situation. I know because I was in that situation. Not too long ago. And I'm like the general who landed his soldiers on the island to attack and ordered the men to burn the boats and said, your way home is through that army. There is no other way. That was the mindset that I had. And when I picked up my head after busting my tail, I was making five figures a month and I was retired. And then I looked back on my 10, uh, you know, the 12 years before that. Why didn't I do that before? Well, I didn't have the pressure on me <laughs> like I did before. But you want to make sure that you're financially stable that you're not going to be hurting while you're building your business. That's one of my advice to you. Do whatever you have to do to be financially stable so that you can build your business at a steady pace.
because this isn't going anywhere. Now, what industry am I and the experts referring to, you might ask? E-commerce is the industry we are referring to. E-commerce ended 2013 at $1.29 trillion and is increasing by 20 plus percent yearly. Now, let me illustrate for you how huge this world emphasize world e-commerce trend really is. Now, like I said, every company wants to have documentation behind them, right? Documentation beats conversation. We have it every time you turn on your TV. Let's take a look at this. I need to make this screen a little bigger so I can read. Here's one. Five problems retailers must fix in 2014. Amid aggressive discounting, little foot traffic, a shorter holiday season, and severe weather, the end of 2013 was disappointing for retailers. Now with barely any time to catch its breath, the industry is bracing for even larger sea changes, such as mounting privacy concerns after massive data breaches and retailers' desire to wean consumers off discounts. As the new year kicks off, retailers are smack in the middle of three to five years. Now think about that. Don't we always say if you start your own business, you need to look three to five years down the line? Why is it that the billionaires do it, but we don't? What amazes me is that the average person will spend 30 years of their lives making decisions and forming a habit that has got them to where they are today, dead broke and, 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 in, the, and in the mud, in the ditch. And they, ex they join a home-based business, they expect to make $10,000 in 30 days, and if they don't, they quit. You're not going to change your habits in 30 days, what took you 30 years to get to. So even the retailers realize we're smack in the middle of three to five years of major changes that will, listen to this, redefine the industry. Who said this? My broke cousin Pookie? Some clown on Facebook? No. Allison Paul, vice chairman and U.S. retail and distribution leader at Consultancy Dilute. I don't know, I, I never can say that right. Deloitte, Dilute, whatever. Paul hasn't seen change like this since big box discounters such as Walmart began to gain momentum in 50 years. Well, what you don't see below, she says, and, I, and she goes on to say, this is bigger than all of those things combined. I think she has a lot of credibility. Look at this one. Without rebirth, malls face extinction. Do you know the purpose and point of malls? It's to gather foot traffic. So not only do people window shop, but they go to the mall thinking they're going to buy one thing and they walk out with ten different things. It's for people to congregate together. When I was in high school, I only went there to look at girls. But while I was there looking at girls, I got hungry, so I had to eat something at the food court. I saw some shoes that I want to buy, so I might as well go buy some shoes or some video games or some music. Back in those days, there were no CD discs. It was all, you know, cassettes. So we'd hang out at the cassette stores and listen to the music there. Wow. And I'm not that old either. Good grief. My son found one of my old Nintendo video games and laughed. He said, what is this? <laughs> well, from back in the 80s. But anyways... Malls face extinction. I didn't, I didn't make that up. It's in, right there in the news. Showrooming left in the dust as shoppers go online. Think about that. They go online and purchase it usually for a cheaper price. Hmm. Here we go. A tsunami. Not a ripple, not a fad, not a, no, people say, a tsunami, not a wave. You guys know what a tsunami is. See, when when, when pe uh, people who write articles use words like this, they're trying to give you a visual. A tsunami of store closings expected to hit retail. This was just January 22nd, 2014. Not even three weeks ago, 
a tsunami of store closings. And you know what to the average person, when they start seeing these stores close, you know what they say? Oh, the recession's getting worse. The economy's getting worse. No, you just lost your job. They're spending the money elsewhere. The money that they were using to pay you, they're now going to be using to do online marketing to bring traffic to their website. The money is still being spent. The question is now, since they're not paying you as an employee, get in shop in Sherlock and let them spend the money on you there. You guys understand what I'm saying here? A tsunami of store closings. Mobile commerce statistics. By the end of 2013, more people will use mobile phones than desktop computers to browse the internet. More than half of U.S. mobile subscribers, 54% owned a smartphone as of June 2012, and two-thirds of them belonged to the 24 to 35 age group, which means that these figures will only go up. A fad is something that's here for a short time and is gone, like these stupid boy bands that always pop up all over the place. <laughs> right? But a trend is when it changes the industry forever. These figures are only going up. E-commerce in the Middle East grew 300% in the past year. Americans are disillusioned right now. We still, we still, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I am patriot through and through. I, you, you take me to another country, I expect everybody to speak English. They will call me the arrogant American real quick. And ignorant behind that too. But the rest of the world has steadily been catching up, and not only catching up, but surpassing us. In all sectors, education, communication, technology, commerce, trade, sophistication. And if you think I'm lying, go to YouTube and type up Dubai. You know where they're building those islands out there in the middle of the ocean that look like the world? Go look, go look, go look at where the world's largest building is almost complete right now. It's not the new tower, Tower 1 in New York. It's in Dubai. Where they're building right now, I watched this, this the other night. They're building the world's largest amusement park. The amusement park is over 100 miles in uh, 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 gross all the way around. A 100 mile amusement park? Are you kidding me? <laughs> they already have the world's largest mall. It's not the Mall of America here in America. Where everybody there is a millionaire. The bad thing about them, though, is they have that all that oil money. They already know that the oil is going to run out in 10 years. So they don't know what's going to happen after that. So they're trying to get all these tech businesses in there before the oil runs out. To make it the new Silicon Valley, so to speak. The Middle East. Go figure. Walmart Sam's Club to cut 2,300 workers. It's not that Sam's Club is going out of business. Oh, no, because Sam's Club is part of Walmart. You know that? The founder of Walmart, Sam. Sam's Club. <laughs> no, they're not going out of business. They've got $40 billion in the bank to spend however they want. Just sitting there. They are redefining their business. We'll talk about that in a moment. E-commerce expanding, again, Look at the titles that they're using. Do you think they're being dramatic just to be dramatic, or is there something to this? This was January 21st, 2014. E-commerce expanding at breakneck pace. Online cross-border trade seen, seen growing fivefold by 2020. The value of online experts in six of the top e-commerce markets will grow fivefold to 130 billion by 2020. Do you guys realize how much a billion actually is? We're not talking about a hundred thousand or a couple million dollars. We're talking billions. That's more money than certain some countries are worth. 130 billion by 2020. Catch this. With Britain, not America, 
with Britain currently generating the biggest online trade surplus by selling more goods abroad, research showed. Americans are not even in the game. There's another article that I, I made a video on I didn't add to here that talked about Britain's gain had went up to like over 800 million and the U.S. was gained by a hundred something million in the same time frame. We are way behind. This is why Shopping Sherlock is exploding overseas. They see this writing on the wall. And, and, and unlike in the past, they all have the ability to get started in it. They don't have the freedoms that we have in America. But they all have access to the internet. And they all can start their own business on the internet. And they're jumping on this like white on rice. And Americans are like, I don't know. Sherlock sounds like a stupid name. I never heard of Sherlock before. You guys have a car bonus? You have referred three and it's free? Why does it cost so much to join shop in Sherlock? Get out of here with that. Do you understand in other countries? You look at the Philippines, for example. The average household may earn $400 to $600 a month. Four to six hundred dollars a month is what they earn. And they see a shopping Sherlock presentation and they see that it costs two hundred and forty nine dollars. Are they walking out of the room saying I can't afford it? No, they're spending half of their monthly income to get into this business. And a comparison, that's like if the average household in America is making four thousand dollars a month, which is not, it's less than that, but let's say it is four thousand dollars a month. That's like an American walking into a shopping Sherlock presentation and we telling you it's going to cost $2,000 to join. Would you sign up? You may say yes, but we know the answer is no. But over there, they're signing up. Spending half their monthly income to get into this business. And once they get in, they don't sit on it. They don't try to figure it out. You know what they do? They're calling everybody, their mom, pop, neighbor, family member, and hitting power in two days. You guys understand <laughs> how far behind we are, even in America, to an opportunity like this? E-commerce is expanding at breakneck pace. This, is, this article is very interesting because not only on this day, this was January 17th, I was here at home with the news on in the background while I was working. And this was on Fox News, CNN, and MSNBC all at the same time about Best Buy. E-commerce not only siphons off sales, but changes shopping habits. Stores confront, look at the language they're using, new world. What, what in the world does that mean? Is that seasonal? Is that just, uh, you know, local? Is that in, in a certain, you know, demographic? No. They said, stores confront new world of reduced shopper traffic new world best buy came out it was a it was a huge it was like they spent 45 minutes on this that best buy is going to convert most of their stores now from what you see it now is not going to be that way in the future they are going to shift their focus to online marketing, driving traffic to their website, having mobile apps so that when somebody walks into their store and they, because people told me, Brandon, we're a generation away because people still want to go into the store and compare the size of the TV and the screen resolution. They're not just going to buy it on the internet. Really? Do you know Mark Cuban spent $17 million on a house in Phoenix that he only saw from his computer and he never actually visited? Look it up. Mark Cuban, $17 million, just dropped it because he saw it online. My father spent over $1,000 on a TV just because it was online. Instead of spending $3,000. But let's just say you're right. People still want to go in the store, try on the clothes, you know, see how it looks on them. But then you know what's going to happen next? They're going to pull out their smartphone. They're going to Sherlock it. Find it at a cheaper price and purchase it online and go home and have it shipped to them. So here is what Best Buy is going to do. Best Buy is going to convert their local stores 
into warehouses, kind of like how Sam's Club is. And what they're going to do is say, yeah, you can come into our store and look. But if you purchase, even if you do it on our online website, in fact, they, they're talking about not even having a checkout line. They're, they're going to have kiosks where you just purchase it online in their store. <laughs> By using your own mobile device or the ones they have set up all over the place. This is like the wave of the future now. And then your item can be shipped to you within the same day. Why? Because they're going to track, and they're already doing, I don't know if you guys have realized this, but your internet browsers is tracking everything you do. That's why you have advertisements on the right of your email pages about stuff that you might have looked up. Well, how, how do they know I'm interested in that stuff? How do they know I'm interested in basketball tickets or a video game system? They're collecting all of that database. So you know what they're able to do? They're able to predict what you're going to buy before you've decided you're going to buy something. And they'll already have the product stocked up in your local stores. So when you do buy it, you may even have same-day delivery. They're doing what's called predictive buying, Hal. This stuff is getting crazy. And most people have no clue. Like sheep, everybody is just a consumer. Holiday sales up, but fewer people in stores. Window shopping is taking a new meaning for many Americans. The latest sales data from the holiday season shows that U.S. shoppers increasingly prefer to research clothes, TVs, and shoes online or virtual window shop before heading to stores. Shopping Sherlock, what is it is what is what do we do? We price compare. What these people are already doing, we can do we can show them how to do it for cheaper. The rise of online entrepreneurs. Now this is interesting. This is the only article I've found so far that talks about how to make money. Not just the big guys, but the rise of online entrepreneurs, e-commerce by the numbers. Now take a look at this. With lower startup costs and a broader reach, a growing number of entrepreneurs are turning to online retail instead of traditional brick-and-mortar businesses, according to data compiled by Ubot Studio, a marketing automation software, so, I mean, software company. I can't read that because of my little arrows, but I think it says e-commerce is a $200 billion industry in the U.S. that is projected to expand by 15% each year. So let's just say Shopping Sherlock only expands by 15% a year, and we're already number one in the world. By default, Whoever's connected to Shopping Sherlock, your business is growing by 15% a year. And we have no competition. This is a very interesting article right here. Starbucks Schultz says there's a sea change happening in retail. Why in the world is Howard Schultz, billionaire behind Starbucks, even talking about this? And again, look at the wording that he used. He didn't say that there's a, a, a fad taking place right now. He didn't say that, oh, I'm just noticing, you know, something little's happening. He said a sea change, not a river, not a lake, not your pool, a sea change happening in retail. The writing's on the wall with these guys. These are billionaires. These are the guys that own the yachts and they pull up anchor and they move with the river of money so that they can make more money. But here's what he said. It's a good thing that people cannot buy lattes online because if they could, then Starbucks would be among the traditional companies that may get swept away by what Schultz described as an online sea change encroaching upon brick and mortar retailers, most evident from a lackluster holiday gift giving season. Reporting first quarter earnings after the bell on Thursday, uh, on Thursday, yeah, Thursday, Starbucks said increased online shopping. <laughs> Starbucks is talking about online shopping, but here's why. Increased online shopping 
kept more U.S. consumers at home than usual during the holiday season, which meant, here's the connection, less visits to coffee shops and malls and near retail outlets. That is why Howard Schultz is speaking up right now because he sees how this is impacting his business and he doesn't even sell coffee online. Goes on to say, in an interview with CNBC, Schultz said he believes December represents an inflection point. That's code word. What that means is that's a test of what is about to happen in the future. So you got to know what the code words are. I studied to go to law school. They tell you, you know, you pick out certain words in, in paragraphs. Very important. I'm going to read that again. He said, December reflects, it represents an inflection point in the growing use of online shopping services and mobile payments. We are navigating through what I believe to be a significant sea change, Schultz said on Squawk on the Street. We're going to be t talking about this for quite some time. I would not want to be a traditional brick-and-mortar retailer. Wait, 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 let me back up. Let me, I, I, just, I just glazed over something he said. We are going to be talking about this for quite some time. So when people say, is Stumping Sherlock going to be here for long? How do I know it's not going to close its doors in six months? There you go. We're going to be talking about this for quite some time. I would not want to be a traditional brick-and-mortar retailer that did not have mobile payments, that did not have social and digital media. Those companies are going to find themselves significantly challenged in 2014 and beyond. Look at what he said there. This, this is a gold mine. See, see, wealthy people who follow the news and stuff, and they're listening for trends when, when billionaires are talking. He just said it himself. Those companies will be significantly challenged in 2014. Where are we right now? 2014. What did we say before? This is the beginning. We're not even in the middle yet. We're at the beginning. 2014 and beyond. You don't believe me. Listen to what the billionaire is saying. Now, our company can position you in front of this major market trend so that you can take part in the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of mankind. And I love when one guy told me this today. Brandon, how in the world can Shoppy Sherlock be number one? I've never heard of him. <laughs> and this was a cocky guy. This was a guy who... He thinks he knows everything. He thinks he knows everybody. He, he said to me a couple months back that Shopping Sherlock wasn't going to do nothing. It's going to be like Ripplin. What are you talking about? <laughs> and all of a sudden now, 131% gain, not last month, not last two months, over the last six months. Best indicator of future performance is past results. Best indicator of future performance is past results. What was it about three months ago we hit number seven on this list? I've got that screenshot somewhere. And here we are, February, number one in the world. So why is that also important for you guys? Because since nobody has heard of Shopping Sherlock, and now that we're number one, Everybody is going to start to look up Shopping Sherlock, especially here in America. Americans are going to look at this and say, I think I over, overlooked that company. Let me take another look at it. Let me, look, let me start doing some research. And when they start doing research, what are they going to do? They're going to find for any content on the Internet that has to talk about Shopping Sherlock. So whoever has the most content on the Internet is going to get the most exposures, where people are going to call you and ask you to tell them about this company. Instead of you going to them, they're going to come to you. I've been screaming it since I'm, so I'm blue in the face in September. Make as many videos, do as many blogs, 
do whatever you can on all the social sites to get the word out. People don't know that this is taking place. All they know is that they're spending money in the industry. They don't know that they can make money doing this. And because of our compensation plan, our company is going to be paying out more money than any other company out there right now. And now I'm running late, but I have to show you guys this. I was working on this, and we are now finished. You know our website, SherlockPresents.com? SherlockPresents.com. Well, that website has a nine-minute presentation about Shopping Sherlock. And one thing that we found is, even with technology changing, especially Americans, we have a McDonald's fast food attention span. Somebody is not willing to sit down even for nine minutes to see the whole video. So we decided to use a little bit of you know, psychology here. Let me share desktop. So you guys should be able to see my screen here. We redid the SherlockPresents.com site. When you go to SherlockPresents.com now, this is what you're going to see on the front page. A three-minute video. This three-minute video. And this video is only a brief introduction to what e-commerce is and how Shopping Sherlock is perfectly positioned in it. In three Three minutes. If somebody wants to know more after they see that video, click here for step two. Shopping Sherlock products. Okay. Tell me about the product. So I click there. And it'll take you to the next page. And here's a six minute video that just talks about the products of Shopping Sherlock in six minutes. If somebody sees that says, Wow, great industry, great products. Click here for a compensation plan. Okay. Let me see there. Let me click on that. A six-minute, almost a seven-minute video just on the compensation plan. So now, the reason why we did it this way, before, in nine minutes, I covered everything in nine minutes, which meant I wasn't able to really get the meat, meat and potatoes of the information out. It's kind of rushed through. Now... I spent a full seven minutes on the compensation plan. And by the time they get to this video, they really want to know more of what's going on. And to them, they didn't spend 15, 20 minutes watching videos. They spent three minutes watching one video, six minutes watching another video, and six minutes watching another. It's all psychology. And then underneath this video, I have top performer of the last six months, Shopping Sherlock. And then at the bottom, it says, get back with the person who showed you this video and ask how to get started. And if somebody were to click on it, it takes them right back to the beginning front page with the intro video. So nobody can sign up on this page. Nobody can be redirected to somebody else's capture page or landing page. It's just a generic site for you to use to expose this business to other people. SherlockPresents.com and I will record a little video, maybe tomorrow, walking three people through this because, again, you know how people are. So let me stop screen sharing. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is our presentation for the evening. Uh, thank you again, Anna Marie. Anna Marie for doing a great presentation at the beginning making internet marketing simplistic and i wanted to spend this time for you guys to, so that you you know i got to open your mind a little bit so you understand the big picture here this is not a 3495 business why it's important that you want to get to vegas we only have two days left for uh the room rate at $134. Only two days left. Now, anybody that's looking to get a room as well, I want you to contact Noel Floyd. Contact Noel. And Noel, if you can still hear me, if you could type in your email address and your Facebook so that people can contact you about options for the hotel. But you have two days left. 
to get this room rate at the Green Valley Ranch. Two days left. And you gotta be there. You gotta be there. It blows my mind when people that can be there decide not to be there. I'm like, really? Really? I remember a story that I heard when I was in college about a guy. He shared a story. He said, ladies and gentlemen, in your lifetime, you will only have two great opportunities, literally real great opportunities that will come by your path. Most people don't even realize that they had two opportunities. That happened. But you have to realize, is this one your first or your last to come your way? And he went on to say that he was one of the original people to sit in the room with Bill Gates and Paul Allen when Microsoft was getting started and they were looking for an initial investors. And the investment they were asking for was a quarter of a million dollars from all the people in the room. $250,000. He had the money. He was excited about the presentation. He believed in the vision of what Bill Gates said they were going to be able, they were going to do. He went home. He told his wife about it. And she said, "You must have lost your mind." going to spend a quarter of a million dollars on some guy who dropped out of Harvard. Are you crazy? Apple owns this show. Apple's in every household and classroom. And he didn't do it. And he said those individuals today, every single one of those individuals are worth no less than $80 million. Now, they might have lost their money by this time or whatever. $80 million each <laughs> and all, gonna, all he had to do was do 250,000 if that's too far back in the past for you look at Facebook Google Sergey Brin those guys the janitors when those companies launched and went public the janitors became millionaires the secretaries became millionaires it was so big that all of the real estate agencies and the car dealerships in Silicon Valley brought in extra orders and extra salesmen because getting ready for the new millionaires because what do they do? Go out and spend their money. And that is happening right now. And even if I was not involved in shopping Sherlock, knowing what I know right now, I would find one way or another to be involved in this industry. If all the billionaires are doing it, if all the millionaires are doing it, why am I going listen, to listen to somebody pitching a $20, $40, or $50 program? Are you crazy? I'm already in the right position. You need to look at what I'm doing before it's too late. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for joining us tonight. I am going to play the wealth the Wealth Inequality in America video. Tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Diamond Power Chuck Williams will be doing a live event in St. Louis. So if you're anywhere near St. Louis, you can go to that live event. If not, you can come right here to liveonedream.info and you can watch it live tomorrow night. And then we have a team call at 10 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to be going over the scripts, customer and uh, and the distributor script. So thank you guys for joining us. My name is Brandon Ivy, Global Power with Shopping Sherlock. Enjoy the video, and everybody have a blessed There's night. There's a chart I saw Bye -bye. recently that I can't get out of my head. There's a chart. A Harvard I saw Business recently. professor and economist asked more than.